Hey everyone, welcome to Underground Scholars Winter 21 podcast series, a podcast about elevating our formerly incarcerated and system impacted scholars' stories. You'll get the chance to listen to our members and advocates supporting USI Three Pillars through recruitment, retention, and advocacy. My name is Marisa Lopez, but you can call me Ritz. I'll be your host for Winter 21 USI podcast series. For today's episode, we have Raven, a current graduate student in the Department of Sociology at UCLA and supported by the UC- UCLA Coda Robles Fellowship. After graduating with honors from UC Berkeley with a bachelor's in sociology, Raven went straight into graduate program. And here are some words from Raven. Um, my full name is Raven Elizabeth Devereaux. Um, I did my undergrad um, at Berkeley after basically flunk, not flunking, but being a bad student um, at my first round of community college um, and really not being ready to do it. Um, And so I screwed up and so I had this horrible record and then I went back and I did great um, and I transferred into Berkeley. I am now in my second year um, of a PhD program at UCLA in the Department of Sociology. Um, And my work looks at um, kind of intersections of state violence um, in system impacted communities um, and specifically kind of like the racialized and gendered implications. Ooh, ooh, Raven. Raven's one of our grad students here at UCLA. Um, If you can share what you do, um, how did you find about like underground scholars and what you're working on? Um, I actually heard about underground scholars um, when I was at community college at Los Medanos College in Pittsburgh, California. Um, And we, I had heard about it because I worked in the um, student services um, department and a student friend and I decided that we wanted to start a club kind of similar to it. Um, And it didn't wind up working out. But then when I got to Berkeley, Um, So I knew of underground scholars. I knew that um, it was, you know, a community I felt that I wanted to be a part of and that I would be a part of, but I was too busy as a single parent um, transferring into um, Cal that I, you know, I was working full time. I'm I'm a parent um, and I'm dealing with you know, imposter syndrome and everything else that goes along with, you know, being a non-traditional student and trying to manage, you know, an insane, um, you know, there is no like life balance, right? Like an insane plate, right? Um, So I didn't have the time to to reach out and everything and to try to find community. Um, And so it wasn't until I was leaving that, I was actually more engaged with underground scholars, um, but it was, you know, it, you know, in hindsight, it's very unfortunate because it is that community that also helps make things easier. So it's like you're stuck in this, this situation where it's like you need that, but you can't even find the time to get it. But if you could, then it would get better. So, I don't know. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I think that kind of leads to the next question I was going to ask. Like, you know, thinking about your journey now at UCLA what does support mean to you? And how have you been able to find it on campus? And now, especially how everything is virtually, how do you find it? How do you find it now? Support on campus is really difficult. Again, you know, when you don't find kind of that validation for our, you know, your experiences, your point of view. Um, so, you know, as you, kind of grow with the academy. I feel like a lot of us come here because we have some aspiration to do something for our community. Um, And, you know, the longer you stay committed to that path through academia, because I think that there's other ways, you know, Um, but I think that when you choose to stick with academia, um, it becomes harder and harder to find those same people. Um, And you have to be more conscious about seeking out people that are more, you know, cut from the same cloth. Um, And that is a huge amount, it's a huge source of support. Um, 
to feel like you are seen and understood um, in a space um, where that doesn't usually happen. Um, like, you know, I still have my friends, obviously, who aren't in academia, right? But they don't get academia. And then my friends in academia, um, they don't understand what, you know, what my life really feels like. So, you know, those people that get both worlds, it's really, really, really important. Um, and they're always a huge source of support for me. Um, and beyond that, connections to resources, right? Um, which always sound, you know, we always, obviously that's a thing, but I think that because that's a thing um, in big universities, there's an overload of resources and it becomes, what's the word? You get lost in resource links, right? Um, and information overload. And so sometimes it's nice to have um, similar communities so that you can kind of filter through that and get better, more like quality referrals to resources, I would say. I like how you mentioned, you emphasize quality and it's something that, you know, in a community, you also want to like have folks who are real, you feel like it's there, um, authentic, and definitely, you know, you feel welcome in the space. So for folks who are like, you know, our formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters who are out there, like hearing this, what is a message you want to leave them if they're kind of just like, you know, I'm scared about school or like I'm a, currently at community college, I'm not sure you know, I have these big dreams, but am I able to accomplish what's, you know, what's in a couple of messages or, you know, anything you want to share? Um, I would just say to, to just always hold in, and remember that, you know, especially people that have been locked down a long time, there, you, you come across people that can, you know, run intellectual circles around a lot of academics. So just because your experiences and your knowledge is not valued by the system does not mean that you do not have it. And so screw them, um, do you and take this knowledge and, and recognize that they're not here to validate you and that's okay. During the last months, our community have been vigorously discussing and taking steps to make sure that our schools are eliminating barriers and providing the support and opportunities that will ensure the empowerment and success of students of color and other marginalized groups. We are here sharing this statement to acknowledge our brothers and sisters who are currently incarcerated. We also want to acknowledge our formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters who have not yet shared their stories. We are hoping to elevate our Black Indigenous people of color formerly incarcerated students hustle. So, interested in collaborating, having general questions, please feel free to reach out our program's email at Underground Scholars at S A O N E T dot U C L A dot E D U. That's all for now, folks. But I'll see you in the next episode of Underground Scholars.